All right. Hey guys, if you are on the stream, you were persistent today. So thank you for that. I'm Damian Stevens, host of MSP Mindset. And the streaming has been against me today. That's uh, more attempts than I've ever had to get connected. So uh, never mind that. If you're here, you made it. If you're watching the replay, welcome. Uh, guys, on this episode of MSP Mindset, I get the pleasure of talking with Adam Bielanski. Uh, a little bit of Adam, he's the founder and CEO of Sierra Pacific Group, uh, author, brand new author, just came out this month of Scaling with Purpose, a roadmap for managed service providers that seek sustainable growth. And I don't know who wouldn't. So scaling and purpose. And we're going to talk some about vision just as a spoiler. Um, Adam, by the way, as a side note, has bought and sold more businesses by the time he was 30 than most people have ever done in their entire lives. So if you want to learn about scaling your business, having purpose, tons of businesses, more than 30 or before he was 30, um, you're going to want to stay tuned. He's also the, a ConnectWise advisory board member and consultant and uh, a lot of other interesting things. But what I think is cool is a Lego or a Lego and Ferrari or a Lego Ferrari enthusiast will have to get to the hard hitting facts. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce you, Adam. Welcome. Hey, pleasure to be here, Damien. It's great. Yeah, a lot of technical difficulties, but we're here live. We, and, we uh, made it. I love being here. Thank you for, for that. So let's get to the hard hitting facts. Is it Lego and Ferrari or Lego Ferrari? That's a, what's it's the... a Lego Ferrari, just the Lego Ferrari. And actually down here in the green, I don't know if you can see it in my camera. It's actually the Lamborghini. Um, nice. So I have a Lambo being built up right now with my son. Uh, we spend two hours a day for two weeks at a time, you know, for a solid two weeks constructing it. It's fun. I, it's something I enjoy doing my son, disconnect from work and work with my hands. So that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Spending time with your son is awesome. I know getting to spend time with my family is huge and not on technology is even better. So, <laughs> um, so guys, we're going to, just as a uh, intro, we're going to dig into vision. We're going to talk about scaling your business, MSP or not focused on MSPs, of course, and what that means. So uh, feel free to uh, say hello in the comments and drop any questions you have. We'll get to as many of those as possible. Um, let me kick it off. So first of all, look, tell me about your book that's just newly launched, Adam. Yeah. So Scaling with Purpose, I have to do the obligatory yeah. uh, holding the book. But uh, it was uh, started out with the advisory council and launching a MSP plus OS kind of operating system. Uh, and, you know, I was like, hey, somebody needs to talk about vision and, and talk about scaling a company. Right. And I feel like I do that really, really awesome. And it's just it's been one of those things that's been it's been part of my goal for the past literally five plus years. Um, and so just things kind of culminated, came together where I'm working on growing, scaling Sierra Pacific Group. Uh, get to that next ceiling, right? And keep continuing to grow, uh, doing the consulting agency. And then I was like, you know, I, I feel the need just to publish and create a book, right? And so using um, all my thoughts and putting it down on paper and writing, it was about a four to six month process. Um, and I was, actually majority of my writing happened down in Mexico, where I, I spent a month down there just it's uh, workcation. So uh, I have a newborn child as well. So a four month old child now five months 
Um, and so we've been out in Mexico for a month and tequilas and tacos and writing a book. And so that's, that's pretty that much what secret? I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything that has to do with Mexico, I absolutely love. Uh, it's a beautiful country. It's amazing. It's just, it does get a lot of bad rap and so forth, but it is really great people and uh, awesome culture. Yeah. So how, how long did it take you to write the book? Uh, it was four solid months of writing the book. Um, wow. and it's turn up the music and just write down your thoughts and then crafting those thoughts and then going out on an editor and say, Hey, you need to structure it this way and that way. It's a learning process. Now it's, you know, working on the audio book cause people are asking for it and it's like, okay, that's a whole nother thing. I learning to publish a book and all that stuff is, is a challenge, right? Cause it's a whole separate industry, right? right. Cause are you going to self publish? Are you going to, you know, go with the publisher? So it, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. Uh, I'm, it's taught me a ton, right? Um, crafting a book and writing down my words and very, very concise, right? You only have a certain amount of time and patience to capture people uh, by reading a book and, and having them read a book. And it is literally my mind inside a book. I, I just, I just, it was a big brain dump, a lot of practical things you can take away. And it's a roadmap. It truly is a practical guide for you running That's a awesome. business. Um, yeah. to, first couple chapters talk about the vision, right? You kind of mentioned uh, this show is kind of talking about vision this particular episode. And right. uh, being a CEO, I, I kind of have to chaperone that right and look out and, and see how we do that. And so I do talk about the growth mindset, uh, and making sure you're have that proper mindset to be able to grow and scale your organization and how you can get your other team members, the sales, the service, the operations, set, and the finance and uh, all those type of teams on the same page. So you mentioned the vision and I feel like it's not been talked about a lot. Why is that so important to you? Uh, it's so important because it gives a single point in which the entire organization can go to. Right. And so what we, in my book, I talk about the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal. And, and quite a few people don't really talk about that, but it's Sierra Pacific group. We want to affect the lives of 1 million business leaders in a positive way. Right. And so knowing that it's like, what can we do to make an impact on these various different tech leaders, whether they're business owners, whether they're service managers, sales managers, right? All the different functions of uh, an MSP business is really super important. So having that single point of goal, everybody rowing to that same goal, and it just, it gets everybody on the same page. Then you kind of, from that point, it kind of trickles down into all tiers of the organization. Okay, what is finance going to do to help achieve that particular vision that you have for the organization uh, to get to that particular point? It's not just numbers, right? Initially, when I was in MSP business, oh, I, I was like, All right, I want to get to that $1 million mark. How can I get to that $1 million mark, right? And it's just not the numbers. It's mm -hmm. actually the culture, the, the people involved, making sure you have the right people in the right seat. Um, and with that right mindset and being caring and just going through it and just enthusiastic about trying to how whatever you can do to hit that goal. That's all you're trying to do. Yeah. So help us understand that, right? Tie the vision into, right? I, I don't know whether it's MSP or any other business, like you said, getting to a million. I think a lot of us that, you know, maybe you're past that, um, but a lot of us are struggling to even get there. Vision seems like a nice to have, right? So can you help me in, you know, tie that into the real world and maybe why does that matter so much? For sure. So it matters because you should be hiring and firing your team members based on the particular vision and culture of the organization. Can you hire somebody in your organization that is going to bring you to that next level, right? I struggled greatly with this, right? Because if I'm a leader in the organization, um, I only have a certain amount of time in a week to actually get this organization to the next level. Well, I don't want to be stuck in the administrative task, right? So what stuff can I get rid of off of my plate, my tasks that I can actually enable me to focus on that? Hiring the right people. So A, hire the proper people to take on those tasks and do it better than yourself, right? And quite often people do tend to be like, ooh, you know, I don't, they get maybe feel bad because they're hiring somebody that's actually doing it better than them, right? But that's actually the complete opposite of what you should be thinking, right? You should be like embracing that, laying into that, like, hey, you're taking it further cool, that lets me actually elevate myself in my role, right? Whether it's a CEO, you know, or whatever role, or other position, right? Because um, quite often, if you're less than a million, you're out there still selling, you're out there still doing 
service delivery. And you have to probably, you know, the best thing is what we call is the Moo method. Something I learned uh, a while back is, you know, figure out all the tasks, write down everything that you do. And, you know, all like everything, like it takes an hour or whatever, just write it down. And then when you have that structure, um, then start figuring out a way to hire for it or outsource it. Then that's going to free up your time more. The more you actually are able to free up your time, you're going to be able to grow and scale your organization. And that's super important um, because you need to write down the things and like, hey, these are the most important things, right? That are involved in the business. And this goes back to my story and my history of running an MSP business. I struggled mightily trying to do everything as an MSP business. Running, you know, service, sales, finance. I was there. I was in the fires back in 2002 to 2008 when my business kind of did kind of take a downturn through the financial crisis. Uh, and that through that I actually learned, hey, I got to let go. I can't hold on to everything. Um, super important and super big lesson I wish I had learned earlier uh, is to begin to outsource and trust people. Um, and going through that, then I went into, you know, stress, depression, right? And going through that also enabled another thing because I actually spent five days in a hospital where I couldn't touch a computer because I was, you know, not due to depression, due to a, the doctors thought it was a heart attack. And, you know, I had all the symptoms, but it was actually a virus infection of my heart. And I was five days in the hospital, couldn't do any work at all. Right. And so my team was kind of frolicking and, you know, it uh, wasn't because I held on to the keys the entire castle. They couldn't mm -hmm. run the company without me. And that was another lesson. And so this move method I talk about is I unfortunately learned the hard way through it. You know, what things do I, does my business need to run without me there? And I just write down all the tasks. So if you think about it, you have 40 hours in a work week. You can only do a certain number of tasks. Well, what happens if you only take half that? What are, what are the tasks that you are required to do? Right? You'd take that list and you narrow it down further. Now, what if something extreme happens and you're only able to work in the business two hours a week? In those two hours, what would you do in your business to make sure it's continued to be successful? And that right there, that key, that one, those couple little tasks that you can do in those couple hours, that's the most important thing you should be doing in the business. All those other tasks, hire for or outsource. And then you start thinking about that mindset, you start growing and, and really accelerating the growth around that. Mm. Yeah, you feel like you're actually talking about me there, Adam. Uh, needing, yeah, needing to do that. Um, uh, before I get further, I have a question, but one of them is, what is the MOO, M -O -O, I, I suppose, stand for? Because now I'm just wondering, or is it not an acronym? Yeah, you can Google it. Uh, Dean Jackson is the person who actually, so it's not an original thought from me. I just did it the hard way, and I didn't know what it was. But uh, learning, I learned from a great marketing uh, person involved in, uh, a common mastermind group, um, Dean Jackson. So if you Google the move method, it kind of walks you through kind of that. So at the end of the day, you're a cow and you want to get milked. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, he has a uh, silly hats and all that stuff. But if you think of it that way, you kind of are right. You are the sole knowledge bearer of the entire organization. You're the entrepreneur. You are the one who's providing that direction, that vision and people live off of that. If you will, they get milked off of it. And well, you need to then, you know, to be able to focus on leading the pack, outsource and, and, you know, hire for those various positions that are not the most important things for you should be doing. I love that. Two hours, right? 10, 20 is one thing, two hours. That's a big, big difference. So yeah, it just hit me with a ton of bricks um, because I was in the hospital. I, I didn't know what it was at all. But, you know, I, I had zero hours, you know, yeah, I was in the hospital for five days, but, you know, recovery time, it's like, yeah, it's another week after that before I can actually mentally get back into business. Yeah. Well, I want to get into that practically, like as a, as a guy that needs to hit more off and, and, and focus and uh, be on the business and not in it. How do you get started with that? Right. Maybe I'm doing some service. I'm almost very few MSPs make it past being the only salesperson. So I need to sell. I got to do this. I got to, you know, maybe I got to do lead gen or marketing or maybe service. I don't know. But where do I even start? Because I probably don't just sit down one day and turn to two hours and in one single you know, afternoon decide to get rid of the other 38. So maybe you do. Nope. Tell me. 
Yeah, okay. it's a, it's you don't. You definitely don't. It's a process, right? And it depends on the level of business you're in, right? And, you know, being, I'm going to talk to what a lot of companies are struggling to get to that million dollar mark. And I'll, I'll talk to that because I, I, I've been there. I was there myself in an MSP business when I started in 2002. And to get to that point, sales, sales is the root of all, you know, it, it's the core of your business. You, to get mm -hmm. to that million dollar mark, you need sales, period. You need money in the door, money and profit in the door. When you have those things, then you can actually start doing more and more, you know, outsourcing, growing and, and scaling. So, you know, if you're an engineer um, who's running a one man or two man shop, you know, the, the, what, what needs to happen is try to figure out how to do sales. So I would figure out, you know, there's great groups out there. Um, really, you know, MSP sales revolution, Robin Robbins, true methods, you know, and to name, you know, quite a few of the larger um, groups out there that are all around the sales coaching, get involved um into those peer groups and so forth that is really really key i will not i am not as successful today because i i involved myself in evolve and communities and eo and various different groups that had a bunch of different minds right the peer group is huge huge so we get involved in a peer group uh first and foremost um being a little bit biased hire a consultant Right. I don't care if it's me, if it's other companies, just hire a consultant. Right. I'm talking to the entire audience. Like if you're in there and you have a software tool and you need to leverage that software tool more, the consultants, we and our team have hundreds of years of experience using the tool. Myself, I've been using it since 2006. Three other people in my organization, same, same length and half the staff is 10 or more years. It, they know the software tools that they use. They know how to grow it and scale it and what, what other businesses we see businesses from as small as a million dollars to several that are hundred million dollar plus businesses. And, you know, it's funny. It's like you, as you grow and scale, the problems get more complicated, but they're the same problems. There's, it gets, you know, more complicated, there's more people involved. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's a lot slower to change that, change that train as you grow. So my little self spiel there is to hire a consultant because it, it's going to quicken your, it, it's going to accelerate the curve, the learning curve and get you to your destination faster. Okay. So just to try to make sure I understand, right. If I'm especially getting there, getting to a million, get, you know, on the smaller end of that spectrum, because I think we all know there's more of those than there are hundred million dollar MSPs. Yep. Um, so if I'm there, I need, so obviously I could go higher another tech or salesperson or something, but that's the big, that's the bigger lift, right? So I think I heard you say, get in a peer group that teaches you to be better at sales that love, you know, leverages your time better and hire a consultant because that's another way of outsourcing or leveling up because you can have your tool do more, make you more effective. Yep. Correct. Yeah. It's just because as a consultant, we see all the different tool sets. We meet all the vendors. We have partnerships. We have people you can leverage, right? And if you're struggling to get that million dollar mark, um, you know, one of the easiest things to outsource is accounting. Typically people hate doing the finances, they're running the books, running the numbers and keeping up with that and sending invoices to clients, following up on payments. That's like easy maintenance. And there's literally services out there that can offer that and, and including us, you know, to do that outsource bookkeeping, you know, start off with those middle, look for obviously, you know, what I call 1099s, you know, get those, you know, sign up for people that can do that, leverage that, that expertise. Um, peer groups you know yes i mentioned a few quite a few sales focused peer groups but even just business peer groups a lot of local communities have you know i would say chamber of commerce which is like people selling other people stuff which i don't really care for right. inside of you know <laughs> you know it, it's it's always that weird thing like everybody's just trading business cards there and not really trading value right yes. um, and i think that's the big struggle peer groups when especially when you get into like uh, EO entrepreneurs organization, which I'm involved in. Um, there's other ones out there um, that have these peer groups that are just talking business that create that value. They have relationships, right? And that's been really huge in introducing various different people to help me get to my next level in my business or your business, right? Yeah, interesting. Well, speaking of relationships and things that have happened, we were talking backstage about. Uh, the a common bond where I think I know I had to go to a client and say, 
this is not what I thought was going to happen. I can't do this for you. I don't want to give away your spill your story, but would you mind, would you mind sharing that? Yeah. Um, I didn't know, you know, cause I was checking to see, you know, what your organization does and, and just researching and, and, you know, do you take care of backups and <laughs> common story that happens all the time back in 2002, 2000 to 2002, 2006, I think was Zenith Infotech having onsite BDRs and streaming online to, a data center that we managed and the the problems there, right? So I had a client who chose to uh, not provide the appropriate internet speed and also <laughs> chose to manually do backups to get things off the ground. And you remember back in the day, you had to send hard drives out to data centers and they process those hard drives. And, you know, but then if you, you know, once you have that initial shot, snapshot, then you had to upload everything. Well, this particular real estate office was doing tons of video, tons of graphics and, and images and and websites, and they were all doing self-hosting. And um, they had a backup failure or a computer server failure. Um, and due to you know the amount of data they were putting on this particular server, they didn't listen to our guidance, and you know they didn't increase their internet speed, so they were behind on their snapshots. Um, and the on, uh, on site appliance wasn't big enough to be able to support that. And, you know, there's like, cause you have to, at that time you had to buy different appliances, like full on buy. And then there was service, you know, tied to those particular things. The end of the day is, is they had a failure and I had to basically say, yeah, you're basically, you know, I think it was two months behind or a month behind on your backups. And it's a humbling experience, the client being really frustrated. So that taught us a big lesson of, you know, stop doing all the work and accepting work just because you can start bringing on the right clients that are going to do the right thing. And you are the trusted advisor for an MSP business. You're the trusted advisor to those businesses when it comes to technology, you know, yeah. what's right. That's a non-negotiable when it comes to certain things. Right. And security, I couldn't imagine today the amount of pressure it is for MSPs to sell into businesses around the security piece. Um, you know, everybody went to remote workforce, you know, it's just the mindset. And I was like, hey, well, the mindset of businesses back then compared to now, maybe it's a little bit different. <laughs> I don't know. But sometimes you get the the older owners, right, that literally, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say have a typewriter, but they still have notepads all over and they're handwriting things rather than yeah. using Note and Apple, right, or notepad on your Windows desktop. And so it's a different mindset. So you st we still run into those things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously a horrible story. Um, just good transition guys. This, this show is brought to you by Servocity, uh, safe where we manage your backups and I'm the founder and CEO. And my, my quick story is I was using a best of breed tool. I fixed the backups whenever they turned red, made them green, all the things except for testing. Then I had to go and look my client and I and tell them I can't recover because I had backed up data that was corrupt and every backup system can back up corrupted data and not tell you. So what do you do about that? Well, you've got a couple of choices. Hire us. I'm going to talk about what we do or steal my process. So Serocity safe. We can cut your support tickets in half by managing your backups. But most importantly, test every single volume every single day. And then we place those in immutable storage. So the only two differences that really make us any different is we test them for you and we we do all the testing and we test monthly, I'm sorry, daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. So I demand, I don't just recommend, I demand you do that. Whether you hire us or steal my process, uh, if you'd like to learn more about Servocity, um, just uh, go to Servocity.com uh, slash um, or just frosty.com and hit learn more. You can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me. You can go there and learn where you can steal our process. And one of those will benefit you greatly because you need to get to the point where you can um, actually look a client in the eye and say, hey, we're good. I can recover. So Adam, that, that really brings me back to like what you said. Like, I don't think things have changed. And what you just, you said something super important, which is I wouldn't let them do that anymore. You let them kind of, I don't know what your words was, but, but decide to not have fast enough internet. So I think there's the class of MSPs that understand that and actually figured out how to crack the code. And then there's everybody else who either 
is hasn't figured out how to do it or even is in between. I get, I get a lot of them that say, I just have them sign a form that says they've refused backup or a good backup or testing of backups or they've refused my good security program. They want the minimum um, and they've signed a form, so that's okay. What do you say about that? Yeah, no, I mean... <laughs> Those are the that so if everybody basically if tides rise all boats all boats rise with the tides right and I think that you know they're I would I wouldn't say bottom feeders I, I hate that term <laughs> a lot you know it, it's more of like there's a lot of desperate business owners just trying to get the dollar in the door and I think that we're always going to have that always just you know somewhere with the consulting space it's just people are going to get the dollar in the door and it's it's it can be frustrating because it brings it brings down the mind the, the thoughts around hey i have a quality msp business why am i charging x amount versus charging this amount it's like the clients are always going to go with the lowest bidder usually unless you can create that value and i think that's the that's, that's right. the problem is establishing that value and having the proper conversations around that the most important thing you can do why that business owner is looking at you is to bring an investment and get a return on that investment with the technology that they have in their business. How can that business leverage your technology that you're providing to bring in more money and, and, and help generate additional, you know, profit in the organization. If you start understanding those key concepts, you can actually start having business conversations. So the, the big thing is get curious to get out, right? So be curious about your clients, be interested in their business. You know, if they're running real estate, what does that look like? What's the mortgage market looking like getting engaged with, how can we help you, you know, do things differently than the other um, office, you know, real estate office or, you know, whatever it is. I'm just stuck on real estate right now. But, you know, that's where you can have those really good, solid conversations. So your QBRs and there's, you know, ample number of people out there that, that do this. Don't just go over ticket numbers. Don't just go over hard drive space available or viruses that, that you, you know, updates and Windows updates, patch apply. That's that's the technical side. Get the tactical side. The business side, how can we help you generate additional revenue or profit? Yeah. So. Yeah, you're a cost, right? If you can't generate revenue or or find some innovative way to reduce costs, then you're basically a cost, right? Yep, exactly. Um, yeah, that's that's really helpful to understand. I want to come back to the vision. I think, you know, there's a lot in your new book, Scaling uh uh, about your your book about yep. scaling an MSP um, and scaling with purpose, but let's let's tie the vision and purpose together. How do you establish a compelling vision? What process do you um, go through? Yeah, so it goes into at the end of the day, like what does your business exist for? What legacy do you want to leave in your life? And this is getting more just uh, you know. Uh, I don't know, up there in a little bit in the clouds, like dream. Yeah. Why do you run an MSP business? Why do you in the technology space? What do you see yourself doing in 10 years? Right. Um, being an EOS implementer, being an EOS consultant, those type of things and running the EOS operating system. And if you don't know what EOS is, it's entrepreneurial operating system, uh, book based on a book called traction, uh, that there, that helps out a ton with helping create that vision and so forth. Um, and, there's also another book by Cameron Harold called Vivid Vision, which creates a three-year plan, right? For what do you want to accomplish, right? Because a business exists more than just itself. Um, I want to leave a legacy. Uh, I want my kids to, you know, be proud of what their father, you know, built. Or um, I want my kids' yes. kids to, to to have, you know, some of this business when when they grow up and they learn and. This is what this is what I'm going to create for my family, and you know, knowing that, knowing the weight of all those things, it's like when you have your own kids, there's something that clicks. And and I, you know, just have a five month old now, and it's it's just additional. I have two other kids, um, you know, that are teenagers, so it's 13 and 15 years old, and going through the, this experience again, it's all the more obvious that I need to be sure I push the vision, talk about the vision constantly, talk about the culture, how we're going to get there, because there's a legacy that that's going to last beyond my own life, right? I'm not, I mean, 
<laughs> death is an it's we're all going to die <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, it's it's a shocker uh <laughs> you know and um don't you know, spoil the ending <laughs> yeah right. so we, uh why not create something that's going to be on earth that's going to last forever rather than just a tombstone you know with your name on it right have a have a business that can provide for families for generations to come that can you know feed multiple families not just my own like i look out for all of my team members um and i care about them all right because they're they they love what they do as well and you know that that's to get people on the vision get them on the same page understand how to create that vision it starts out with that i know i just rambled on for a bit but it's the true purpose what what is the purpose of why you do it and that's why i wrote the book scaling with purpose right because mm -hmm. you have to have that purpose you have to have that drive what does working your butt off mean to you like why do i put in 60 hours a work week right right um you know tim cook we all know him apple ceo said um well we we basically use the term you know uh, find something you love to do and you won't feel like you're working. Um, Tim Cook flipped the script and says, find what you love to do and you'll work harder than you will ever work in your life, but it won't feel like you're working. Yes, I can totally relate to and that. That was a quote that he had and it just resonates so much. And while I was writing the vivid vision, that kind of quote, it just, it resonated with me so much. Cause I'm like, I work really long hours. And it's like, why do I keep doing this? Why? It's just because I have that passion, that purpose. Yeah. Sorry. Getting no, really no, deep. Totally. Here. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, what have you learned? Like, I know in the intro, um, you bought and sold more businesses than most people by the time you were thirty. So, I'm guessing you're at least thirty now. Uh, uh, <laughs> I am forty-two now. Yeah. So, forty-two. Uh, I don't care about my age. It is what it is. Um, yeah. yeah. I bought. So. As an MSP business, you you feel like you own a market, uh -huh. um, and you, so I you, had an MSP business based in Merced, and I had a capture on the radiology market, and I was like, okay, well, I need to expand beyond the Merced area because I had a, a million dollar a year business, and I was like, okay, well, how do I get to two million? Well, what's the mindset? It's like, oh, I'm going to go expand. Let me just open up another office in another location because that seems like a great idea to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It yeah. works for a period of time. So I was like, well, rather than opening doors and investing in staff and trying to get clients and sales, why not just acquire businesses? And there actually happened to be like four or five different companies that were small. Like I'm talking real small, like two, three hundred thousand dollars a year that had some mm -hmm. clients. And I was like, uh, you know, I was like, hey, well, let me just talk to them about buying their business. And I bought their book of business and I created an additional million dollar a year business in a separate location. Um, and so going through that, I learned a lot, um, and, and how to expand into certain markets. And I talk about that in, in the book, scaling with purpose, how to go into an additional market, um, because there is a lot to play, um, you know, now in technology, you know, it's really, really key to focus on your soul market and your soul area. And when you do to look to expand, there's certain things you need to accomplish and go through and, and understand when doing that. Um, so. You know, that's what that's what got my business buying, um, you know, buying all the businesses to, is that thought around expanding into different markets, which accelerate because I don't want to invest in sales and because that takes a long time. And back then I was not good at hiring and, and, you know, keeping the sales engine running, if you will. I was horrible at it. I went through probably a dozen different salespeople over, you know, a <laughs> course of three, four years. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately. So what did you learn from all that? You bought all these businesses. You're now you're in all these different areas. Like, give me, give me a couple of the top takeaways of like, I went from a million dollar business in one area to now hopefully building, I don't know if they were a million or half million, but whatever you, you bought them for less and built them up. Hopefully what are some of the takeaways? Define your purpose and vision and stick to it. Mm. Um, you know, become niche in something. You know, and this is something I learned creating my consulting practice, right? And a lot of people do say I'm a little crazy for staying focused. We we consult on one software, 
uh, and there's there's some other little software like QuickBooks and Enable and you know ConnectWise, right? And and so we primarily like 90% of our revenue is generated from one single software source. We're niched of a niche, like we're in IT space, but then we're ConnectWise only consultants. And that's, you know, it's it's limiting and people think that, oh, that's going to limit me. I can't generate additional revenue. When you actually do that, you actually do propel yourself in revenue. You get much higher um, and because you're so niche, you're so good at what you do in that particular space, you become what's called a micro celebrity, a term I had no idea was like what that was until I, you know, hired a consultant, a coach, and also was involved in a mastermind. And, and when I was involved in that, you know, there, I was like, what businesses do you do? Well, I coach, you know, X, Y, Z. I was like, wow, that is really super limited, you know, and, and they have this huge business. And I'm like, I had no idea that there was a need for that particular thing in that particular space, like people organizing calendars in certain ways. And, you know, for free time, I'm like, wow, that's like a super niche little thing that people try to solve those problems. So that would be probably the top two things is know your purpose, create that, create that vision, and then make sure your niche stick into that. Gotcha. So how do you take this vision and this purpose and tie it in to lay the groundwork for predictable growth? You know, what would you do, right? Uh, I'm an MSP, you know, okay, I kind of get it. I need to go spend some time and think about, because I started this because, you know, like me, I like tech. I was pretty good at it. It paid decent. And, you know, all of a sudden now I'm running around spending 80 hours a week working and, you know, and then I might've made some money until then I started trying to scale and now I'm investing it into the team, which is the right thing to do. But now really I'm making less than anybody. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you know what that's like, so how do you, you know, if you've convinced me on vision, what do I do to turn this into predictable foundation for growth? Sure. Yeah. The biggest thing you have to do is, you know, if you have a team, if you have team members is to make sure you have a weekly cadence uh, meeting. So we call those, uh, weekly tacticals. So we have weekly tactical meetings, which I'm, we meet with somebody in service, somebody in sales, somebody in, you know, finance department. Now in my company, you know, there's teams of people in each of those areas. Right. Um, and when you identify and work through those weekly tacticals, you have what's called quarterly summits or quarterly, we call them quarterly summits, quarterly retreats, which is take two days, um, uh, a year or sorry, two days, a quarter and talk about, Hey, here's the things that we're going to work on. Here's the 10 items that we're going to work on this quarter. And we create rocks on that. Again, all this is outlined in the book called traction. Um, and it talks about how to instill and roll out this particular mindset around getting everybody on the same page, uh, having KPIs for every single role in an organization and, you know, having defined job descriptions is really super key, not just job descriptions. Now with the uh, advent of, you know, or proliferation of AI in the marketplace, we can take our job descriptions and actually add psychographical data on those of like, Hey, here's what we're kind of looking for when it comes to the, the job. So having those right mindsets inside those particular roles is huge for getting that next step. So just don't hire bodies in your organization, hire, mm -hmm people that can help grow that particular seat. And it's what we call a right person, right seat um, mindset. So there's a ton of things that, you know, it's first off, off weekly and quarterly retreats, weekly meetings and quarterly retreats. Okay. So big word, psychographic, that stuff. How do I, why do I want to add that? And what does that do for me? Instead of like, why can't I just copy Bob's MSP's description of a similar role? Yeah. You know, if you're, and this is what I struggled with when hiring sales when I was running my MSP business, I was looking for certain person, certain personality type, and it just wasn't clicking. They didn't have the same mindset. And so that's where, you know, I'll talk about ConnectWise. They have ConnectWise. If you go to connectwise.com slash modes, they have this thing called modes theory. And it's, it's really around four key things. Are you an enterprise builder, value builder, startup mode, or, um, uh, there's one more, I forget, Start, startup, business, growth, um, and then empire, I think it's the, the four. Um, and when you start, it's that's the mindset that people get in, get in. And so when you go to hire somebody, you want somebody with a similar mindset that says, hey, you know, 
are they in growth mindset or are they in a mindset where they're just like lifestyle business, where they just want to sit there and plug away. They're good. They're happy with their salaries. They're, you know, just want to do the work and they don't really want to grow in their career. They don't want to go to that manager level. They don't want to go to that manager to executive level or director position, right? They're just happy just doing the work. So, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. But quite often we do see people be put into positions and it's quite often it's like, oh, well, I have this great engineer in this business. Well, let's make him a service manager. Well, a good engineer is not always the best service manager, mm -hmm. right? Because it's managing people and that's a challenge. They might be able to really be really good at talking with people, doing solving the problems with engineering, but they might not be the best manager because when you go to manager level, it's like, hey, here's more KPIs you're responsible for. Here's the mindset of what I'm looking for in that particular role. Um, and it's a little bit different, right? And that's why I, raising my hand, struggled mm -hmm. mightily with that mindset when I grew my MSP business is forcing my team like, oh, just hire at the bottom, help desk as engineer, engineer or help desk to tech support and then tech support, you know, uh, engineer, and then engineer goes to service manager. I was thinking that's like, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah. I've made that mistake many times myself. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so. so that's why it's important. Uh, and any, any insight or tips on why to not just copy the same job description? Why, you know, is it important for our vision or values or anything to come through in that job description? Everybody has different jobs and different roles in the organization based on their purpose and their culture of their business. Just taking a job description, copying it, pasting it from another, you know, all these monster and, you know, competitors in the market and you know, all these different things, right? That can get a good basis, start and foundation. I get that. Um, but with AI nowadays, you can actually have a conversation with it, understand the mindset of what you're in, um, and then just explaining the context in which you're trying to create and hire this role. It will give you a job description back with what you're looking for that is completely customized to that role you're looking to hire. And that's the really cool, exciting thing. It is really amazing to watch this tool uh, be used. And, and the data that I can get out of that uh, is super, super critical for, you know, getting the right people in the right seat, uh, running my business the way I want to run my business, um, and hiring those people uh, with the proper job descriptions. You know, it, every business is different. Every business has a different purpose. Every MSP has a different purpose. Um, you know, there's some common things that align with quite a few of them, but you know, it's just, there is uniquenesses yeah. in the business. It's not really, we exist to solve tickets, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Put out fires. It's constantly chasing the fires, right? Yeah. Um, well, I know we touched on this in the beginning, but I just want to dig deeper. Why did you feel like you, this book needed to be written? There is no book out there right now like it when it comes to man running a managed service provider or business that talks about the mindset, talks about growing and having that purpose. What drives owners to make decisions? How do you get to that scaling? You know, what things need to be in place to be able to do that? I am not aware of an MSP specific book that's in the marketplace at all like that. Now, I'm going to give a shout out to Carl Palachek. He's actually mentioned it in my book. So I don't also have all the answers either. There right. is a summarized wisdom at the end of every single chapter. And I, I, I mentioned other books that are really good. Nigel Moore, another guy I'm going to give a shout out to. Really great book around packaging and pricing. Uh, Carl Palachek around some service and some service stuff. And, you know, because there's quite a few service books he has. You know, this is a great foundation, a great roadmap for growing and scaling a business. And I'm I haven't seen a book like that in the marketplace. Well, why did you feel like it was needed? Like what inspired you to do it? Right. I mean, you, you've learned all these lessons. Why, why do you need to write it down? What do, what do you think there was a gap or some sharing or my message, sharing the message. And I, I just, there's a lot of MSP businesses right now that struggle still. We hear it day in, day out as a consulting agency. Um, you know, I go to channel pro, I go to ask, I go to quite a few events I'm hearing the same kind of message and tone. I'm like, I think I can help you. I think, you know, I want to give, you know, we give a lot of knowledge away um, mm -hmm. and share a lot of our knowledge. And, you know, not just around the software tool, right? I operate 
ConnectWise Boss. I operate ConnectWise Tips and Tricks. Facebook community is the largest Facebook communities uh, around the ConnectWise tool system. And, you know, a lot of the common things is, like, yeah, just giving and sharing of knowledge in there. And, and uh, the book, you know, I just, I just wanted to give, create that legacy, right? A book is going to last more than, longer than I, it's paper. It's going to last a heck of a lot longer than I I'm going to live here on earth. So and it'll forever live uh, on Amazon. <laughs> so That's right. Uh, it's that legacy, I guess, right? So there was a That's purpose awesome. behind it, right? I just, I, it's something I always want to do. Um, share what's in my mind when I'm running MSP business because I care a ton about the MSP business because I had so many failures in my MSP business, so many lessons learned. It was so painful from fighting depression, from fighting, you know, fighting like, hey, how am I gonna find that next paycheck to make payroll, um, you know, the, the, to get, get that next client, to get that next sale. It's always the next, the next, the next. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, and, mm. cause I've walked into quite a few MSP businesses that are just calm, they're very cool. They got, it's like, there is, craziness going on it's like but everybody's like yeah we're getting through the problem we're tackling it mm -hmm. and they tackle with that confidence right and i just want to give msp business owners and leaders the confidence to be able to do it. like hey this is what i'm seeing this is what i'm doing this is a roadmap for that success yeah being worried about that next check for our team being stressed being depressed i can relate to that so what what would you recommend what's your take on how do you you know, how do you run a calm business? And because you still have fires, you still have issues. How do, what's the difference? What separates? Um, acknowledging that you or any MSP business owner is in the technology space, there is going to be a problems. Just like in security on doing security offerings, you are going to have a breach. You are going to have a security problem. It is going to happen mm -hmm. but how you handle those problems is the differentiator do you want to handle those with calm cool and and know that you got it and know that you're working through it knowing and trusting within yourself that you have the skill set and the ability to be able to solve those problems they're going to come up and being prepared for that right um and I think that's the difference between running a calm and cool business versus one that's like stress. It's like, I think a lot of, there's a lot of fear around or second guessing themselves around running that MSP business and not knowing the tools. And, and, Oh, I had this unexpected outage. You just weren't prepared for it. You're not forward thinking enough, you're preparing for those down times, Right. And I think that's the biggest thing is to be proactive. I know I was in my early days running a ton of reactive, ton. And part of the EOS mindset, part of scaling with purpose book, part of the traction that we that's talked about is being in front of that, outlining a process to be able to be in front of it. And that's what actually is the calm. Hey, I, if I'm expecting a fire, I know exactly how to solve that particular fire problem, right? Why do you think we have sprinklers in houses now in California, right? It's they're, they're prepared mm -hmm. and, you know, I know that, oh, it might have a leak. I already have a tool in my <laughs> in my garage when a fire sprinkler might break, you know, snap or whatever, you know, because house I've seen houses do that. And it's like, well, they're not prepared. I I am prepared for that, right? Because I don't want to flood my house. <laughs> right. So you can do the Especially same with your newborn. business. You are going to have a security breach. You are going to yeah. get crypto locker. You're going to get something. It's going to eventually happen. You can put all the software tools out there. Somebody is going to find a way to get through that. It's going to happen. So why not be prepared for it? Right. How, how do you recommend starting that? Right. Be prepared is good. Good advice. But how do I, what do I get started with? How do I dig into that? Um, knowing the software tools in and out, I think is probably, you know, educating yourself. So quite often, you know, I know when I was going to run my MSP business, I didn't like Zenith Infotech and not knowing the tool as much as I you know, should have, or I wasn't prepared. I wasn't in front of it enough. Um, so first and foremost, knowing the tool set that you actually deploy in your business, having a really great partnership with the vendor that you're procuring that stuff from and getting 
the entire team trained on all those things is really important, right? I think that that's what separates a lot of people um, and how you can prepare for that is to have those great relationships of establish the vendors and knowing the tool set. So you're saying you don't just take the 20, 30 minute onboarding and then blame the vendor afterwards. That's uh, <laughs> why isn't their tool solve all my problems. I have spent 20 or 30 minutes, you know, I like I set up MFA. Like, do I have to do anything more? Uh, uh, it's going to open up a whole nother Pandora's box because <laughs> um, <laughs> MSPs, and this is so frustrating. It's so it's weird that I say this, but it's like, it is a tool consuming industry. Mm-hmm. They, we love buying tools to solve problems. We're techies, right? It's like, oh, this new thing. And right now, AI, it's like every week there's a new AI tool out, like at least mm-hmm. a dozen. And it's like solving this problem, that problem, this problem. That. It's like, I couldn't imagine the bills that some MSPs have right now just buying and procuring all these different tools because that's, that's what a lot of people do. They don't take a step back. And I talk about it in the book and understand what business problem am I solving with this particular tool and how can I integrate this tool and actually leverage it to generate an income, create a, a, a safer environment or, or a scalable environment. That is really super important, right? Not just buying the tool. Oh, I bought the tool. I'm cool. I have, you know, XYZ acronym tacked on into my name and, and, you know, my business covers those, you know, HIPAAs and all those other acronyms for security, but actually, Leveraging the tool, using the tool, and being invested in the tool. Be invested in it, right? And investment is training your team, knowing inside out, and being prepared for when that disaster comes up. Yes. Since I was an MSP that lost data, it speaks to me. It's certainly a part of, a large part of why I do what I do. If you've ever been near that, that's that's horrible. And like you said, there'll be a security breach. There'll be something sprinkler head will fail you know i don't know something will cause you to need to do that and the prepared versus the unprepared is is huge um adam i I appreciate you being here today um i'd love to give everybody the opportunity to figure out more about you how to connect uh how to find out about your book so tell us the best way to get connected with you get access to to buy your book what what, what do you recommend yeah for sure definitely check me out uh i am on uh, linkedin Facebook, ConnectWise Boss uh, Group. I will actually get you a link right now in chat. I'll send it out right now where you can actually go and buy the book. And if you're interested in um, reading it, definitely check it out. Uh, let me actually paste it in chat right now. Give me one second. Post it. Yeah. Can I chase in comments? I don't know if I can comment in there. But I will put it in your, in our chat. There you go. You can we'll get that out there. Yeah, we'll get that. So Yeah. And so, sorry, go ahead. Um, no, no, go ahead. D- just tell us how to get connected, whether it's your LinkedIn, whether it's Facebook, wherever you like to hang out. If, if I'm MSP going, I could use Adam's help or I need to ask him a question or I want to heckle him. I don't yep. know what they're saying, but how do we get connected? Yeah, now? for sure. Facebook. That's where I primarily live is within the Facebook communities. ConnectWise Boss. It's facebook.com slash CW Boss. Um, and that's where I primarily hang out. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn and also Reddit. Uh, those, those are really the three social networks, but primarily on Facebook, uh, connect with me on there. Uh, you can always email me, Adam at Sierra Pacific group.com. I will, I do free consulting sessions. People want to book some time with me. I can share a calendar link. Just email me consulting in the subject line, Adam at Sierra Pacific group.com. And I will send you my calendar link and we'll schedule some time, quick chat, maybe get a little mindset shift and, you know, be on your way. Uh, I do that completely free. You know, uh, so um, I love just talking. I, I I can share in a lot of the pains and frustrations of running an MSP business, and it doesn't have to be that way. And at the end of the day, I want to get that message out. And that's why I wrote Scaling with Purpose. That's why I run Sierra Pacific Group Consulting to leverage the tools that are in the marketplace that are leading and cutting edge tools that, you know, can really make a positive impact on business leaders. I couldn't have said that better. That's that's awesome, Adam. Yeah, so buy his book. Jordan has been nice enough to drop the links in the socials. You'll see it. Jordan's helping on our team. So uh, Scaling with Purpose book, if you want to learn more, you can find Adam on uh, Facebook, like he said, CW Boss or ConnectWise Boss. It's CW Boss, I believe. And, 
And then last but not least, we'll drop in uh, ways to get a hold of him. So whether you read his book or engage in the forum or actually take him up on the free consulting offer, if you're not changing and transforming, then then you're missing out on an opportunity to take advantage of an amazing opportunity, guys, here. So we'll do that. Um, we'll make sure to share his uh, LinkedIn as well. And um, so grab those in the comments. If you've missed any of that, ping us. We'll be happy to connect you guys. If you're watching this on the replay, we'll be happy to get those to you. Um, Adam, this has been amazing. Thank you for being here. Uh, willing to share, refresh on a book launch. I know with between that and a, and a newborn, you got a lot going on. So I really appreciate you doing this. Um, and uh, um, I'd love to talk about how we could do um, more down the road. Oh, for sure. Definitely. I'm always thrilled to be here. I love what you're doing. I love these conversations. I love these podcasts and sharing on social medias and all that stuff. So I'll definitely be sharing this episode out there. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys awesome. for having me very much. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you, Adam. And let me move over here to see if my streaming will be cooperative today. As we wrap up um, today's episode of MSP Mindset, um, I just wanted to share that uh, mspmindset.com slash news is where you can subscribe. Uh, find us on all the socials at MSP Mindset, whether LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, etc. wherever you social, it's MSP Mindset. Uh, or if you're interested in getting some free consulting advice, et cetera, from, from me, just visit Sravasi.com. I'm happy to book a time to talk with you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And um, then if you would like to um, actually engage and uh, talk further, um, you can do that from Sravasi.com. Uh, we are live every two weeks here, guys, on uh, MSP Mindset. Um, and uh, so... Just join us here every two weeks, and uh, with any fortune, we'll have some of the streaming issues worked out. Um, so I appreciate you guys doing this, and uh, have a wonderful day. Probably offline. Try wrapping up here and streaming is stuck. So. Dance. <laughs> this is the bonus after show that we totally had planned, guys. So no worries. Uh, yeah. So there we go.